All right, three, two, one. Hey everyone, Harry Welchel here today. I have Vince Hall with me. We're going to be talking about how Vince got his first client in about three months helping data scientists uh, with their careers. So Vince, why don't I turn it over to you? Can you just tell everybody a little bit about yourself, your business, and what you guys do? All right, hi. Yeah, so Vince Hall, and um, so I coach data scientists to get jobs and to get better jobs. So generally... The idea is we want people to be working with people they identify with, have similar values, uh, working in industries that they believe in, and getting salaries where they feel appreciated. So I guess I started in May. Uh, So then got my first client in uh, August, and working with with a former colleague now. So... Back, back when I started, I was working a full-time job. I was just doing this business um, part-time. And then... Vince. Yep. R- real quick, let me just jump in. So, yeah, like how did you decide to do this business? Like what were you doing before this? Talk a little bit about that. Okay. So also working part-time on the business, I was, I was trying to do coaching people to do uh, machine learning in Python. And... Um, do you have a background in that? Trying to get in, getting going. Uh, yeah, so I've been doing data science for several years now, and I did a machine learning PhD. And so I thought, I, you know, there seemed to be a lot of people interested in that sort of thing. Uh, what drew then, you originally to uh, machine learning? Okay. So I guess it started when I was studying. I was trying to decide what to do for master's and PhD, and I was kind of interested in everything. So it was hard to narrow down. And I thought if I do machine learning, then I can use um, the machines to quickly learn any subject, or hopefully I'll be able to get into a whole lot of different projects and different subjects. That was the thinking. Did you study like computer science as an undergraduate? Okay, so I, I studied physics as undergrad, and then it was like an interdisciplinary master's and then a PhD. So the PhD was between the chemistry department and the engineering department. Interesting. Very interesting. Were you, what, what made you decided to go like that master's PhD track? Did you think about becoming a professor at some point or being in academia or kind of what drew you to that path? Yeah, I suppose so. So I wanted to do something. So coming from physics, wanted something a bit more life sciences maybe neuroscience, but then machine learning is sort of the technology equivalent of that, I think. So, right. What do you mean by that? Like it, you felt like it was kind of like <laughs> so, you're, you're bringing the machines to life? <laughs> yeah. So it, it's like machine learning seems to get inspiration from how the human brain works learning things and generalizing. So that's kind of my thinking. And like neural networks, that was especially that sort of thing. Got it. Yeah. The, um, the metaphor for the brain has changed over time and now it's very, or the, the mind and, and like the computer comparing the computer to the, to the brain, (laughs) the brain to the computer. It's like, I can see that. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Cause they used to say like, uh, um, like the mind was like a machine back in like the industrial era. And now they're like, they're like the big metaphor is the computer, but then it goes back the other way. Now, like people are writing code and programs that are modeled after neurons and, and the brain. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's like, um, heavy in learning and neurons and networks and yeah. Interesting. So you said so you, okay, you got on that path, you're doing the master's and the PhD. Um, um, what happened after the PhD? Did you go into academia for a while or did you get into industry? So I wanted to do a data science job and uh, managed to get my first job after PhD was uh, data science. And then, so let me see, it's about six years doing different data science jobs. And uh, Why one did of those you decide was- to go into industry? instead of stay in academia? 
Yeah, good, good question. So I kind of want to get into bigger groups and doing more impactful work. So in academia, you have small groups and you work on something for a bit and then you publish and you, you move on. And if you're lucky, some companies get involved and they use it. But um, I felt that if I was working in a company, then I could be working in much bigger groups and ha having like thousands of customers, millions of customers, you know. And uh, yeah, in the end, I did end up writing code that worked for on the order of 100,000 people in, in my first job, at least. Cool. So it sounds like you you personally are like not only just interested in the 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 science uh, learning studying yourself but also like seeing an impact in your work seeing that your work is is helping people or solving different problems is that is that fair yeah that's good nice that's awesome. nice yeah. so okay so you you what types of jobs were you in like were they all very similar or are they different um so the, well, the first one was working in a medium-sized company, like uh, vehicle telematics. So that this is like tracking vehicles and uh, seeing if people are good drivers. And I was in a small group. Our boss was the founder of the company. And then the second job was actually back in academia, but funded by a car company. Uh, right. So it's, again, vehicle data. And, again, a small group. But the car company wanted to pick up that technology straight away as soon as I finished because especially with their their research vehicles, they just had too much data to deal with. So what I was doing is like a data compression. So they wanted to use that straight away. But then, is there, is, is via, are vehicles and automotives like – is that a really in-demand industry for machine learning right now in data seems science? To be, seems to be quite a lot going on. And also where I live in the West Midlands of, of England, there's a lot of there are a lot of car companies. A lot of um, a lot of people around here are employed by these car companies or funded by them. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Yeah. But um but in, in my next job was working in a startup and um, this is med tech, so looking at the magnetic field of the heart, trying to make a scanning device that can see if you're having a heart attack. It uh, shortens your trips to hospital because most people go into hospital, they have chest pains and they think, am I having a heart attack? And then eight, 12 hours of testing and they find 85% of people not having a heart attack. So it's kind of a huge use of resources. So we want to minimize that. That's the idea. That sounds really different than the automotive stuff. Is it it was, so was it cool to be able to have that skill set and <laughs> like go from working on one problem and then something that's totally different? Yeah, yeah. So that's um, the sort of thing that I really like about data science and machine learning. I guess I'm more specialized in machine learning sort of things. Uh, you can just suddenly shift to something totally different. Uh, there was a lot to learn in the subject area, but it's, you know, it's still – uh, there's some really useful work in that area. Yeah. I, I mean, I never, I, so I wasn't a data scientist. I was a software engineer. And I remember that was one of my favorite things. It's just knowing that like there was just so much demand and there's so many different problems to solve out there that um, when you would interview or like when people, when you thought about where you wanted to go next, you, there were so many different industries. You could learn about all these different things um, and kind of bring your skill set to bear on that problem. <laughs> and uh, so that's, that's really cool about the field of data science and that's, that's, a, a part of it. So, so you're working in medical technology, um, did that technology get to market or is that kind of more of an early stage phase when you were there? Uh, yeah, it was just early phase, so still going, still trying to get it to market. Uh, my contract came to an end and then people are still carrying on with that. Cool. So, so you, you were having these different interesting roles in data science what made you decide to like help other data scientists with their careers? Okay. Yeah. So I've always kind of wanted to start my own company and uh, yeah, it's nice to be doing this research as well. But so I want to have 
more flexibility and more ability to work on the research that I'm most interested in. And I always wanted to really have my own thing, which I can grow in my own way. Where, so, where does that come from? Did you like follow businesses growing up? Do you have like entrepreneurs in your family? Like what, what kind of piqued your interest in that path? Uh, it just seems like a, I thought, how do people become really, really successful? And the answer usually seemed to involve being in, in companies, having a lot of owning a lot of a company or founding a company and that sort of thing. So I think a lot can be done and, and you can scale up your work and you can get a whole lot, a lot of people to work for you. Uh, there's so much that can be done. Whereas in academia, you can work on really cutting edge stuff, but there's always like, how are we going to get money? And, uh, what can we do here? And it's very small scale. Yeah. It's really interesting work. And what's also interesting, I mean, uh, I think there are people out there that debate, like they've, they've, a lot of folks think if you really want to be doing like cutting edge data science, that actually it's happening in industry more than academia at the moment. It depends, I guess it depends on the type of work, the type of problems, but a lot of people think, you know, in, in Google, in, um, Facebook, in, um, Palantir and um, I don't know. I'll probably name any you know <laughs> uh, billion dollar private unicorn company. They probably have very interesting data science teams and problems and stuff and data sets that you can't get access to in academia. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's totally right. You know, the times changed because it used to be all the interesting stuff was happening in academia or a lot of it, and now I think it's some really cutting edge stuff. With, massive awesome stuff's happening in companies yeah and uh, yeah so it seemed in the uk it was all if you do physics or maths or something like that and you're you're clever you want to earn lots of money you don't go to academia you go to you go to the city of london and then trade finance stuff. no trade money <laughs> no it seems more like tech startups are, are becoming are stealing all those good people but what is interesting is that like some people are saying that with the because the data science solving this problems requires massive data sets it's really hard to start startups right. in that field because they don't have the data and so that's why you're seeing all the data scientists the machine learning people move into the big tech companies mm -hmm. um, because it, uh, like uh, you have to find some creative way to get the data that you need if you're a small company so in you, for you, what's interesting is like, because of your, you want to start a company and you also are bootstrapping something, it's small, it's lean, efficient. You're also interested in data science. Uh, to me, it's cool that you figured out that you should help people advance in their careers. And that would be a good way to start a business and kind of check both those boxes rather than just try and go and start like a, like some sort of data science startup right out the gate when you don't have the resources and the data to do that, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I thought about how can I not have epic costs? I'm quite interested in robotics, for example, but massive startup costs there. And like MedTech, I was working on massive startup costs and huge regulation because you're dealing with people's lives here. So that's why. And um, let me see, how can I figure out how to do something and not have massive, hard, uh, sorry, startup costs and then do kind of the same thing each time so I can get really good at it. Yep. And it doesn't need to take nine months to start up each new project. So so I thought, you know, like consulting, but then training people to do things rather than doing it. So rather than done for you, yep. it's more like done with you. Uh, so, so that's more can get going quickly. So similar each as we've had, as we think about like your business and what you're doing, what do you think makes you unique when it comes to coaching people to get better jobs in data science, to get their first job in data science? What do you think makes you guys really di differentiated from um, other folks doing it? Uh, if, if other people are doing this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I know other people are doing career coaching and I know other people are doing recruiting, which is quite similar, but I haven't heard of a lot of people doing, who are data scientists and machine learning people and engineers. 
doing that sort of thing. So, so I have a business partner, with, uh, and we're both engineers and data scientists, that sort of thing. So we really know the industry, really know the work, and um, done interviews, a lot of interviews on both sides, uh, hiring side and and being hired side. Yep. Cool. So you actually, you're not, right, like you have personal professional experience in the shoes of your client, seeing what they want to do, experiencing it on both ends, the the hiring side, the interviewing side. Yep. So that would definitely be really, really useful as you think about how to best best help them. So let's go back to kind of right before we were working together. Think back to like the month or two before that. What What were you doing before working with me? Okay. So I was, it was obviously uh, five months or so into trying to find people on Facebook and sell them the coaching and doing machine learning with Python. Yeah, you were doing something a little bit different, right? Like you were trying to teach them the skills, right? Yeah, the the, the coding and, and that sort of thing. So I wasn't really sure. I was thinking, is this really the right sort of thing to do? There are a lot of free or very cheap courses out there uh is this really what i want to be doing and then i talked to you and you you said why not do basically career coaching uh teach the soft skills because there's not really a lot of that going around and uh come get uh, clients who who already know most of the hard skills because they've been to university and, and that sort of thing maybe they're already in data science job help them get the next best job yep so i I love it so before we dig into that further like you know when when you were doing trying to teach people machine learning um the actual python the skill the hard skills and stuff um were how was that going like were had you had any leads had you had any clients like what was that like so i got uh one client uh and they were paying over months, they were paying installments. And then it was very low ticket, actually. I reduced my price quite a lot. And then COVID-19 stuff was getting started. And I guess it was already two months in. And uh, Were you getting said, frustrated at all with, like, yeah. just, like, yeah. the, 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 the pace of your results or your traction? Sure, yeah. Yeah, so that one person couldn't pay anymore, and they said... Let me take a break until we get until my family gets some more money, basically, and that hasn't restarted. So, <laughs> yeah. So, like, what were um, like, how were you trying to generate leads back then? Okay. So I was trying to make friends with people on Facebook and uh, go into. Yeah, groups where people are interested in data science. I was trying to answer, answer some questions that they had, uh, that sort of thing. But, yeah, it was very part-time as well. And You were still I, working. I, yeah, working in a job. And I guess I, yeah, I wasn't doing all that well. I was, oh, yeah, I had a Facebook page as well about this. And... Uh, website that wasn't doing anything yeah so speak to like what what were some of your frustrations at that time like going through kind of round one of the business so i guess a lot was finding that there are a lot of people who are interested but they can't pay or they just think i can get something much cheaper somewhere else yeah, and, and also there's the problem of starting up. So it's like, why don't I go to someone who's really established? Uh, why do why would the client come to me? Got it. So um, you're having a hard time finding people that could pay, or who, yeah, who, maybe they would say they don't have money or they they can't afford it. But like maybe they just perceived that you know they did, but they had a hard time getting them bought in to to invest. And then maybe some beliefs around um, and doubts and concerns about how can you compete when you're just starting up? You don't have any track record yet. Got it. Yeah. So, you know, as you're going through this, where did you first hear about me? 
I think um, you connected with me, uh, probably answering some questions. I saw you on a Facebook group about uh, entrepreneurial sh- entrepreneurship. I seemed to notice you there, and then you befriended me and started chatting. Okay, cool. And and what piqued your interest? Um, they seemed to be very helpful, and then I got I saw your interviews with people with uh, your clients that you've you've really helped, and it just seemed to really work for me. I, I thought, yeah, that's what I need. Uh, I need someone to coach me one on one, and um, or in a small group, and. A lot of the, the clients that you had seem to be quite similar to me. Nice. Nice, man. So as you think back of the last couple of months, you know, we don't have to go through every single detail, but like maybe can you speak to one, two, three things that you've really benefited from, that you've learned, that you've improved through the process of, of working with me? Okay. So one of the things is scale. So uh, I want to be learning. I want to be uh, connecting with a, a whole lot more people. So I'm really trying to do that, and uh, that successfully, I think. Uh, so yeah, just touching on that quickly. What else? So, so I think so that's kind of on like lead generation. So figuring out just like what it actually takes to generate leads, um, how many conversations you need to be having, like actually getting a firsthand taste of that, and seeing what it what it takes. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Yeah. And, um, I guess just, uh, and it's also just keep building things. Uh, don't expect it to happen straight away. Uh, don't be really worried that it's happening a little bit slower for me. I guess I've not been going super focused, difficult, uh, like with having a job for a bit, but not anymore. And having kids at home with lockdown and summer holidays and stuff. Uh, yeah. So um, another thing I think that's really good is uh, you're really good on helping people to showcase what uh, how they've helped people. And so I'm kind of getting started from nothing, but um, you helped me, you gave me some advice there, you know, get some social proof. So then people can view that before talking to me in, in strategy sessions. Have you um, found that to be yeah. helpful, having those assets? Yeah. yeah, people seem to like that. And people really seem to uh, get get good uh, advice from there and enjoy that. Nice. It's awesome. So let me see. Uh, yeah, right. Sales script, I think that was really good. Uh, I think you helped me a lot there. And structuring offer. Yeah, quite a lot of different things. So yeah, n- number of different well, things. Just kind of like seeing how to do the basics at a higher level, deeper. Just doing those things well. Um, do you feel like you're still? I mean, tuning those things, practicing those things, getting better every day, working on those things. Yeah, I reckon so. Yeah, so I managed to get my first client, but there's still more to do. Uh, there's a lot more to do, a lot more to learn, and I need to get better at sales, better. at you know, talking more freely and, and listening and digging deeper. Uh, I'm getting there. You are. You definitely are. Um, so, yeah, what, what what's on deck for you in the next, like, 30 days, 60 days? Okay. Um, getting result for my client and uh, getting them a nice job. But But also, yeah, teaching them how to – generate uh, generate those leads for jobs basically so t- teaching them how to network effectively and how to build their network lots of different skills to give them and then finally getting them that job that they're really looking for awesome yeah that'll be uh-huh. huge getting that well, success uh, story is going to be really critical to you know going to the next level for sure yeah and then I really want to get get an interview from him and uh, I really want to make, make sure he's happy and then people can see I've helped out this person. I'm sure it will get easier after that. And then getting going with more clients. Yep. So that's what I'm aiming at in the next few months. 
Yeah. And I, w- I would just say, as you do that, as you work on that along in parallel, see if you can get a, a couple other clients, you know, and have a nice little cohort because they'll get inspired and motivated by being together, working together, seeing each other, having wins and things like that. So, um, you know, don't stop on the sales. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> so yeah, like wh- more broadly, kind of more abstractly, are there any areas of your life personally, professionally, do you feel like have changed or improved through this process? Yeah. So having my own business is nice. I, um, I, I have more control over my time, so I'm not so stressed about got to do all this work uh, at these times. When's the boss going to phone? That sort of thing. Uh, I guess I'm probably getting better at talking to other people, and and uh, like if people get stressed, then I'm kind of getting to the bottom of what is what is the root cause here, and. Um, what can we work out? How can we work out a solution? Uh, anything else? That's perfect. So better control of your time, better flexibility with your time, and also just better communication skills. It sounds like also better emotional intelligence, like being able to, to understand the other person, what they're feeling, and help them diagnose their issue, you know, and get to the, the root issue. Is that is that fair? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. Like these skills, um, uh, inter, inter, interpersonal skills, emotional intelligence, uh, those things, um, time management, things like that. Like you're right. Like these, this is all a big part of growing as a business person, business owner. And these skills, no matter what you do over, you know, your career, your life, like they're just so valuable, but they're, they're really soft, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah and I guess, awesome. You, you uh, hinted it. There is more about. I feel now it's more about get some things done, and actually work really hard on those things for a bit, and then I can go back to other things in my life and working with my family and uh, painting the bathroom or whatever. And uh, before it was epic things. I, I have to work all the day through. Um, so trying to get progress, but I feel like I'm making more progress this way. I feel, you know, it's more about getting it done, not being busy. Yep. I see. So also seeing the difference between, yeah, like just being busy with kind of make work. Are you really spending your time wisely versus maybe, um, really understanding what is the key thing you need to do doing that, but then giving yourself grace once you've done it to like, if you have to do a chore, you have to do this or that. And like kind of having that flexibility and being, being less like, like, I mean, I remember with me when I was starting out my career, yeah, you just think that like, if you're chained to your desk, you're spending hours there, you're productive. But if you're not doing productive things, it, it's not really moving anything forward, you know? Yeah. Um, nice, man. So what, um, you know, as you think, think back to our sales conversation, why did you decide to do business with me? So... It just, well, even before the sales conversation, it seemed like there was, there's a lot of track record for you. Uh, you'd, you've done some really good stuff, and I thought that you could do that for me, and I think I'm right. And, uh, yes, so in the sales call, it was an easy chat, and uh, you seemed to be helpful. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to go, go forward with that, and I didn't want to put off uh, business anymore. I wanted to really get started building this business. Yep. And so, yeah, we did. So was there anything at the very end that kind of had to kick you over the fence or were you pretty kind of like pretty decided even before we started the conversation? Uh, so you were saying, like I was a bit worried about time because I was still in a job. Uh, and you were saying I can still do a lot in, in my spare time in the months to come. So yeah, I think I, I managed to do quite a lot in that time. Got it. So yes, yeah, you said a sense of doubt, hesitation about your schedule at the time. And then we were able to address that and, um, we got you, got you going now having actually done that. And like you're working on this for a while, part-time with your job, 
was that, did you find that that was true? Like, did you feel like you were making progress, learning, you know, doing okay, even though you're doing it part time? Yeah, I felt like I was learning a lot. I felt like I was getting things done, moving along with the process. Yeah, building up everything to start the company, starting up properly, yeah. Yeah, and I think that goes to the point we just talked about earlier about like uh, often it, people are making progress not because they're not putting on in enough hours. It's because they're not doing the right things in the right order or doing those things well enough. <laughs> And once you have someone to show you how to do that, it's like you can all of a sudden really utilize that one Saturday or those, you know, the Saturday and like two or three evenings a week or whatever time you have available. And all of a sudden you're moving forward again. Yeah. And also because a lot of it is, so your training is available on, I can get it on my phone and I can also do a lot of Facebook stuff, connecting with people, finding people to connect with, finding data, uh, data science groups, chatting to people. I can do it a lot on my phone, so I can just do it a uh, spare moment here or there, wherever I am, always have my phone with me. Uh, so that, that, that was a lot easier than, that's a lot easier than previous work as well. Nice. So would you recommend others work with me? Yeah, definitely. Who, yeah. That, well, thank you for that. Like, who do you think is a good fit in particular? Okay. So... So I guess my experience is just starting out pretty much from nothing. Uh, you're very helpful in that. So you've got a, a great wealth of stuff, that a wealth of knowledge that is definitely useful to anyone doing that. And also others who people seem to do really well with you where they, they already have a business and they're making some money. It might not be so predictable every month and you help them to get that really scaled up. So people seem to do really, really well. Uh, either of those. Yeah, I like, I like that. I think that makes sense on that kind of first person, person just starting out. I wouldn't sell yourself short. Like you aren't really starting from zero. Like think about the things you have. You, you are <laughs> well-trained, you're a technical professional. You had okay. industry experience. So you had a lot of raw materials okay. of expertise and, and professional experience, life experience, work experience, career experience that just needed somebody's help to package up and then show you how to add the sales and marketing skills, you know, that you need to turn it into a business. So I wouldn't say you were starting from zero by any, any measure of the imagination. Um, do you see what I'm getting at? Do you agree? Sure. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it's just like, I was okay with jobs, but not in business. So, uh, Getting started with business, uh, yeah, there's a lot that I learned from you, and I'm still yeah. learning. Yeah, uh, and I would say, so, so I, I like to think of it as, like, people like you are, like, technical professionals, people that have real experience, but they're looking to start a business. They're looking to change from a job to a business, and they want somebody to show them the ropes uh, to make to allow it to become predictable for them to get there faster. And, yeah, I love working with people like that because they have – Again, like they have that, the skills, they have their own materials, they just don't know it yet, or they don't, um, um, they don't have the sales and marketing piece. They need a few dots connected for themselves. And once they do that, they're, they're off to the races. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So why should someone listening take action right now? Yeah, so, so my, my biggest fear is, uh, is not – taking is not um taking too many risks but it's not taking risks i think you don't you know, basically they, what do they say you don't regret the things that you basically the risks you take you re regret not trying to do something uh and like someone once said to me when i was even younger so i'm pretty young now starting in my career you don't get to work on as many projects as you think. Uh, your career kind of goes quickly, so don't wait. Uh, there's never going to be a good time. There's, just um, make it happen now. And, and there's so so much to grow because, um, yeah, there's just so much you can do. But if you don't get started, then you're never going to do it, and you'll just regret not doing it. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting, man. I feel like most of the people that I talk to, it's not that they're like, 
trying to, <laughs> I don't know, like they're like, it's not like they think about it, it's like they're buying, you know, an iPod and they're trying to figure out, do I want the black one, the white one, the red one? Like they're shopping around in different options. It's like they're, um, it's either they're going to do it or they're not going to do it. That's the choice. It's like either stay where I am, status quo, or make a change. And that status quo can be like insidious, man. Like <laughs> people don't even real, like, realize like that is a choice. Like that's what you're doing. You're, you're making an active decision to just stay where you are. And um, I love what you said about like, yeah, like people actually like taking healthy calculated risks. It's important. That's what life and growth, like growth and learning and change comes after doing that. Um, and uh, um there is risk in not doing anything either. Like that's, there's massive risk, but it's just harder to see, you know, if that makes sense. But I would ask you this, like now having done it, do you feel like it, it was a risky decision or like, do you feel like it was, was not really that risky at all? <laughs> I think in the start, in the beginning, it's kind of risky. Cause you're thinking if you don't have a lot of savings, then you're thinking, how do we keep going the next few months? But there's just so much growth that can happen from uh, having a business like personal development and money and so many options uh, that I think it's just, it's so worth it. And uh, am I answering the question? Yeah. So you're, 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 you're glad you made the decision. You're glad you jumped in and, and um, yeah, that's awesome. Good, man. Well, I'm excited for you. Like this is so great. Like, um, you know, everyone moves at their own, uh, path, their own journey, their own pace. I think you're doing great. You're, you're knocking things down. You're predictably moving forward, advancing toward these milestones. So keep up it up with it, man. I can't wait to see what you do next. Um, just a couple other questions. So lastly, like, uh, what would be your number one piece of advice for other coaches and consultants? Okay. Let's see. Uh, I guess it's, it's really important to focus on helping people. And, uh, like if you are starting a business or that sort of thing, don't focus on the money because then you'll probably just flip from one thing to another. Oh, that's going to make me money. That is no, that, and then you'll get good at nothing. Uh, focus on being really helpful to people and then people will want to come and work with you. Yep. I love it, man. Yeah. It's like the folks who are like just trying to like make money online are like, Oh, what's the, the right niche? what's the right thing? And they're like shopping around what business to do. It's like, that is not a recipe for success. It's like, like you said, picking one group of people, just focusing on helping them. If you keep working and getting better and better, 10% better every day at helping those people, um, eventually they're going to want to start paying you money <laughs> for them to help you. And then they're going to want to pay you a lot more money. And then, and then that you're in business. It's just like a natural progression, but people don't, people don't realize, yeah, you just have to get good <laughs> you have to legitimately put in the work, get good at helping one group of people solve a problem in a predictable way. And if you can do that, it's, uh, it's really fun and it's, it's not that difficult. It's not rocket science. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, where, if people want to learn more about you, your business, where can they find out more about you online? Well, yeah. So, uh, I'm, uh, my website is, uh, Vince Hall And, uh, People can check. People can go there, check a bit about me, and uh, I'm also on Facebook and LinkedIn. But that's the easiest uh, place to get to. And then people can book a, a quick chat with me, just see if I can help out. So it's a free chat. Nice. So yeah, either go to the, your website VinceHallConsulting.com, check you out on Facebook, send you a friend request, send you a message, yeah. something like that as well. Cool. So I think awesome. on Facebook I'm like Vince Hall One. I think that's it. Okay, cool. Well, Vince, thanks so much, man. Uh, yeah, let's keep uh, let's keep going, and uh, can't wait to see what you do in the next thirty to sixty days, man. Excellent. Thanks, Harry. It's been really good. All right, man. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.